This is by far the best and the safest strategy for new traders to grow their small account. But you have to follow these two criteria, and we're gonna talk about it in this week's video. Buying the dip or buying the bounce or buying the morning panic, it's all the same concept. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book, or DVD rather. And that's because it generally has a high probability of success rate. If you are selective, you cannot just buy any dip or any red candle pullback, or you can accidentally catch a rug pull and get dumped on. And trust me, getting dumped on by a stock is hell lot worse than getting dumped by a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I mean, that's what I heard from a friend. There are two different bounce setups I personally used when I was growing my small account, and I'll be walking you guys through step by step. And all I ask is for you to tap the like button. I'd really appreciate it. The first setup is what I call the strong day one bounce. Let's take a look at our example here, ELTK. This was a low float runner that I've talked about in my past video on how to trade low float stocks. So on August 30th, ELTK opened with low volume and slowly gearing up in the middle of the day. After that $5 line broke, that's when the buying volume started coming in to the stock. Now you don't want to be chasing that $5 breakout level that many chat rooms will be alerting. Because 50% of the time, these midday breakouts can turn into fakeouts. The safer way to enter as a lone trader will be to buy the first pullback. But not just any pullback when you dip here intraday. We want to start by looking at the daily chart. Which brings us to the first criteria when buying pullbacks. The stock has to be breaking above major resistance line on the daily chart. Like I mentioned in my last video, the daily chart can provide you with a trading bias, either long or short, and also the important support and resistance lines that you should be looking out for. Because those are areas of supply and demand. So looking at the daily chart for ELTK, you can see the last major run on this stock was back in late May of this year. After the stock sold off from $12, it was consolidating on the daily chart around that $5 support line, until that support broke down even further, down to about 350s. And you can see that this prior $5 support becomes later resistance. That means the buyers that was holding up the $5 level, they have now turned into sellers. That's why on August 30th, that $5 resistance line is an important level for ELTK to have to break out above. We have to see enough buying demand to outweigh the sellers that was on the daily chart. That's when this prior resistance truly becomes support. So let's now turn Turn to the intraday chart for ELTK. After the stock breaks through the $5 mark, it spiked up to 590s. This is where I'll be looking for a pullback down to that major daily support line to get long, around $5. But how do we know that this important line drawn from the daily chart is actually gonna hold up a support? And this is why you must Tap the like button for a chance to get a Lamborghini Aventador. Just kidding, I didn't mean to give you false promises. You actually get a Lamborghini Hurricane instead. Wait, was it Hurricane or Hurricane? The important thing to look out for when buying a pullback from a support level on the daily chart is volume, which is the second criteria I look out for when I'm buying the dip on a strong day one stock. I want to see significant volume coming in to this $5 level. I personally just use the above average indicator to see when a volume is breaking out to the upside. On the 3 minute chart here, you can see that ELTK, after selling off from the high of 590s, is starting to consolidate around that 492s area. After this major exhaustion candle, in which we see the stock selling off with heavy volume from 530s down to 490s. And after the heavy selling, you can see that the stock is consolidating around that 490s level and not selling off any further. This is where you can see down here, the green volume bar slowly coming in until it broke above that volume average. When you see this increase of buying volume around that daily $5 area of interest, this is when you know the buyers are stepping in to the stock and this is where you can get long. Some people like to anticipate and they just leave an order out at $5. If you choose to do that, 
that make sure to scale in slowly and do not use your max size until the buying volume has confirmed. What I personally prefer to do is to get in after seeing the volume has started to come in. That allows me to get into the size I want with more confidence. At the same time, I would have a very clear risk of that $5 line. And the potential reward would be that previous high of the day at around $6. And if the stock can break above the previous high of the day, it could possibly go up to $7 or even $8. Because those are the next levels of resistance lines or supply zones on the daily chart. But on the other hand, if ELTK fails to hold that $5 line, that important $5 support line you drawn from the daily chart, that means the stock probably would have gap filled and sell off back down to 460s. But if we were to analyze this setup from a risk reward standpoint, when buying the dip or buying the pullback after that volume has come in to that 515s area, you'd be risking just under the $5 support, so maybe the max risk is 490s. For a potential of making $1 a share up to $6 previous high. So that's a good risk to reward setup. But on the other hand, if you were to buy the breakout here at 570s and later on around $6, which is by the way the most commonly taught strategy in many of the day trading chat rooms, you would be chasing up here. Then the risk will be 30 cents to make about 20 to 30 cents. So that's one to one risk reward. Not exactly a safe long term strategy strategy that can help you grow your small account. Now let's go to the second bounce setup that I really like, which is what I call the day 2 morning dip setup. This is very similar to the day 1 loan setup with just a difference in timing. The day 2 morning dip, well, mostly happens in the morning, within the 30 minutes of the open. And it's very suitable for part-time traders. Let me explain in detail here with LCI. LCI was a hot stock on the street from August 28th to August 30th after the company has released better than expected earnings. The stock basically had an inside day on August 28th, but it held the daily gap up from $6 to $8, technically, without selling off, which is very impressive. So the same criteria number one from before applies here again. You want to see a strong daily candle breaking out on the daily chart. So on day two is when the day two dip setup comes in to LCI. We can see that this stock pre-market is starting to sell off back down to below that $8 support line. And how did I get this $8 line? This was a price that was held with high buying volume on day one intraday. And this line is also drawn from the daily chart and coincidentally was the day one close. So on day two, after profit taking from previous day's close at $8, the stock dipped down to 770s. But the selling volume down here beneath the $8 line is extremely low in comparison to the buying volume that's stepping in slowly. At this point, two things can happen. Either LCI picks up the buying volume and the stock breaks above the $8 resistance line, or the buying volume dies down and the stock is held beneath that $8 ceiling and the stock continues to sell off. In which case, that would become a day two short setup. So you can see criteria number two still applies to this day two dip setup. You want to see above average buying volume, which is confirmed here on LCI. After the stock breaks above that important $8 ceiling with volume, this $8 line is also previous days close. That means this stock has went red to green on day two, which is an important psychological trigger for the longs to get in and the shorts to cover. As for entry, you can either get in long after seeing this wedge consolidation pattern break out above $8 with strong volume, or you can get in after the stock pulls back to 804. Both of these entries are valid, seeing that there's strong volume here to support your long thesis at $8. And the risk for this day two loan setup will be the previous low of the day, around 780s, with the potential of going back to previous day's highs, around 880s. So you'd be risking around 20 cents to make 80 cents. That's good risk reward. 
The day one and the day two bounce setup is pretty similar, but the difference is that on day two, you have the day one support levels from the daily chart already confirmed. Basically, the support level is already defined really recently for you. Another difference, again, is the timing. The day two bounce setup usually happens within 30 minutes of the open, which is why some people call it the morning panic long setup. In my opinion, buying the bounce on day one or day two is the best and the safest strategy for beginner traders to grow their small account. Because realistically, most people don't have the brokers that allow them to short. And buying a dip offers the best risk reward and offer loan traders a clear price to risk off. But of course, you cannot just buy any bounce in any stock. Let's take a look at example AKTX. You can see that on day two move of the stock on the daily chart, the stock basically gap up and sold off. This daily support level around 217 area, but you can see that this line failed really quickly intraday, and AKTX never really bounced off that line. And that's because there's no buying volume coming in to support the major price line from the daily chart. So that's the importance of using the daily charts and the intraday buying volume to find high probability bounce setups and filter out the rest, especially when we are in a buyer's market right now in August and September. On the other hand, when we were in a seller's market in late July, where everything just gap up and sell off, then buying the day one and day two bounce setup is probably going to fail more often than not. This is why there's no single strategy that will work 100% of the 253 trading days of the year. You need to be adapting to current market conditions and always be selective of your place. Again, this buying the pullback or buying the bounce or morning panic, it's the most commonly taught trick in the book. Even though people teach the same setup everywhere, I found that not a lot of people explained why certain support level is going to hold while others fail. So so hopefully this video really helps you guys out. And make sure to smash the like button for more quality day trading videos from the Humboldt Trader. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next week.